Hello my soccer universe. Well, yesterday was not exactly the day that I wanted to have soccer wise and yeah, I don't have a shirt of any of the teams that won yesterday and I didn't want to take down the Germany shirt from that one to kind of, yeah, Frankfurt. But yeah, um, I'm not gonna go now, but it's like more or less chronologically because I started with Lusk and yeah, I'm wearing my Lusk 100 year black jersey because this was entering the dark times of Lusk and uh, it kind of felt like dark times yesterday although not the game itself was actually quite good Lusk played at home to Hartberg lowly Hartberg uh, who just scraped into that um, uh, championship round uh, and they have been beaten soundly 5-1 uh, ironically when Lusk beat them 5-1 they actually qualified because uh, another team didn't make uh, the sufficient point. So big celebration for Hartberg in, Lin in Linz or Pushing, I should best or better say because that's where they're playing at the moment. Long story. Anyway, game started well. Lusk should have gotten a penalty. Um, actually, at first I thought, yeah, it was is a foul. Although the player play play ball, but he went really uh, rough in it, and it looks it's like it ran on the edge of the box. I have I would have to say only on the replay you see that that it was really at the edge of the box. Uh, free kick doesn't bring anything, but then a little bit later, Jao Klaus in the ninth minute, wonderful shot, makes it 1-0 for Lusk, and I think everything is going smoothly. The problem is that Hartberg then kind of realized that the backline of Lusk is vulnerable, and yeah, we were playing without uh, Trauner and Filipovic, which never is a good idea. Trauner was suspended, Filipovic uh, got the rest because they want to save him. You know, we have now such a dense calendar, so they wanted to save him. So I didn't really like the backline all that much. And Hartberg used that one. Had a, and with the first shot on goal, Reiko Rep, former last player. Um, you know, he's free on the right side, he could pass towards the middle, but then he sees, ah, that the goalkeeper is coming a little bit off his line and then between the goalkeeper and the near post, he puts it in, 1-1, one, one. yeah, okay, 1-1, one, one. I think it is something that happened also when we won 5-1, I didn't think much, much about it, I liked how Hartberg was actually making it a game, and the funny thing is that Lusk made many fouls, um, but Lusk took control of the game again, and after a wonderful attacking move, uh, back hill freezer to Jean Klaus, who puts it in, uh, the side, um, and basically empty net, and Balic, yeah, the ball was bouncing. He doesn't hit it right and it goes over the bar. Uh, that was in the 43rd minute and I thought, oh no, is this one of those days? Is this one of those days? Um, because at that point, if they make this 2-1 there, it's done and dusted. Second half. Uh, again, Lusk has more of the game, is more dangerous, um, but also around the 60s, you know, the substitution started. And yeah, I think the first set was all right. The second set, I think, broke a little bit the rhythm of the game. Um, but still, Holland takes aim, hits the bar. Then a little bit later, um, and now, uh, no, no, there was a header. Holland he takes aim, hits the, uh, the hits then the post, and it comes out. And then in stoppage time, he again hits the post. I mean, uh, the bar. Uh, was really one of those games, and there were two more of uh, two more situations where uh, just the goalkeeper was lucky to get there. So Lask should have made the goal, but on the other side, Hartberg, I have to say, in the last 10 15 minutes, really uh, had also good chances to get the uh, get their goal. And then it was a corner kick in the 94th, where Schlager just cannot uh, tap it and it falls to Tadic and he puts it in. Uh, devastating loss. One of those days where you have to make four or five goals and it doesn't want to go in and in the last minute you lose it. Although I have to say, I was actually, I'm not that unhappy that they lost it. Uh, because, you know, if a draw, ah, yeah, we scrape by, we, we got a point. Now it's really, now we have to, uh, it's serious. If we really uh, want to take it despite the six point deduction, we got to get crack cracking out. This was hopefully the wake up call slight fear that this might be a foreboding of something more sinister coming but I actually hope it was a wake-up call. In the other games in the championship round Wolfsburg won 2-1 at Sturm Graz. Um, the first goal a wonderful bicycle kick by Sean Weissmann. Goal of the... Uh, since since the restart, that's the best goal 
Um, they make it tool to do and Stream can only pull one back. And South Park had rather easy uh, game with Rapid, uh, making it 2 nil. It was not great, but didn't see much to, to be honest, but it's exactly what I expected. Uh, in the relegation round, the bigger result was the St. Burton beat the Tirol 5 nil. Everyone said that Tirol is, they have to play in Innsbruck. Um, not in Wattens, where they are from, and they, of course, don't have many spectators because Wacker Innsbruck is the team of Innsbruck. So they, everyone thought, yeah, they will be used to uh, playing behind closed doors. Nope. St. Burton, who is the last plus team, 5-0. Austria gets a very late win over Admira Wacker. Mattersburg Alter 1-1. So let's look in the table. Uh, with this Lusk loss and Wolfsburg winning, now Wolfsburg uh, leapfrogs Lusk and also Rapid. And you can see the Champions League, the uh, race for the Champions League spot is really, really tight. And next week, uh, this weekend, Lusk has to travel to Wolfsburg. So um, that's going to be interesting. Um, also, with the six points deduction and Lusk losing now at home, I think we can more or less say Salzburg is champions. Congratulations. Yeah, they did well. Um, but yeah, a three way race and Hartberg and Sturm, uh, we have to see, they don't see much. But I think it's a, at the moment a clear three way race for the second Champions League spot. Which, ironically, the third place spot is a direct spot in the Europa League group phase. Whereas the second spot here is um, second Champions League qualification round. So um, if you lose that one and then you lose in the Europa League playoffs, you're not in Europe. It's not as attractive uh, in a way because, you know, you're not really guaranteed that you go through. But hey, that's what it is. You still want to go probably Champions League. And I think you would have a good chance to go uh, there. And if you look at the bottom half of the table, I still keep the original table in there just for completeness sake. And also it makes the whole picture fuller. Uh, yeah, St. Burton shoots up and the relegation race is uh, wide open. Absolutely wide open and also see that Austria Wien is not that far, far away. So although I don't see much chance of them getting relegated, it's a really, really tight group down there. Let's move to Germany where we had the big uh, game between Bremen and Frankfurt. One of those where I really thought this is a momentous match and it was relegation battle in its purest form. Um, very tight first half, very intense, not many chances. The slight chance, I think, Bremen had it a little bit better. They had an appeal for a penalty and would have gotten it if it if Klassen at first wasn't a sec, like that much offside. Uh, second half, I think, for a uh, game similarly, but then you could see that Bremen got nervous and Frankfurt actually um, composed themselves. Uh, they were clearly over-motivated also. Hint, Hinteregger could have easily been sent off. But yeah, um, they already had scored a goal that was correctly taken off for offside, also with also millimeters. But then from a nice cross of Kostic, Andre Silva had it in the 61st. And yeah, I think that broke a little bit Bremen's back. Bremen had a few chances where if they played nice, they could um, be, um, you know, one man or two men uh, up and played nicely. But they never could. They was always too hasty, too insecure. And then Hütter brings on Ilsanka, a guy who never scores with his first touch after 19 seconds. After corner kick, he puts it in 1-0. And then after another um, dead ball CAC situation, he makes it even 3-0. Uh, so uh, he scores two goals for Frankfurt. And now if we look at the table, this was a really a huge game. Because if Bremen would have won that, I think I would have given a very realistic chance of getting out of relegation. And Frankfurt would have been in trouble. Frankfurt now look, uh, look safe. They even leapfrog Köln. Um, yeah, safe. Given that they have a 10-point cushion on Bremen, they had worst case will get in the relegation spot. But I think Frankfurt kind of stabilized itself. This was a huge win for them. Bremen on the, on the other hand, yes, it's still close, still only three points from safety, but there's a trip to Bayern in there, although there's also a match against Mainz, so we have to see. I, I'm not as optimistic about Bremen anymore, I promise, if Bremen uh, manages to uh, stay up, I will buy a Bremen jersey, I promise that now, for sure. Uh, in the second Bundesliga, uh, we also had a um, makeup game. Hannover beat Dresden rather easily 3-0, uh, not 2-0. Uh, 
um, and also moves up, makes a big jump, and this uh, tells you how tight the second Bundesliga is. They were in 11th spot, and with that win, they're suddenly in 6th. That's three points. Uh, it's really, this is a really, really tight league. I. It's not inconceivable, although highly unlikely when you see that Hannover is getting uh, relegated, but uh, they are still not too far off safety. Um, you know, nine points clear is a good cushion, but yeah, uh, it's really, really tight in the second Bundesliga. And then let's finish in Portugal, where we had only two games. But a uh, rather interesting one I had. I mean, the first one is the Portimonense wins 1-0 over Gilles Vicente. But then I actually saw the highlights of Porto against fam uh, Ed Family Cao. And Porto was largely the, had the more of the game, had more chances. However, uh, their goalkeeper, horrible. Uh, one, he, he wanted to shoot it out from basically the goal line, mishits it, and the Family Cao striker just can roll it in. Porto gets with his with, with the only chance to equalize uh, uh, in 75th or so on, but a few minutes later, Fafa Car with a nice shot makes it 2-1. Huge implications for that one, because if we look at the table now, Porto is not favorites anymore. Benfica has, has a game in hand if Benfica wins tonight, and yeah, I decided to make the video now and we'll do it a little bit later. If Benfica wins tonight, they are back in first place, so that championship race is a tight one. I have to say. Uh, Portimon has slightly improved their chances of staying up. Anyway, this is the Wednesday action, Tuesday Wednesday action. As I said, Thursday has a little bit of proper, but I packed this in in my uh, weekend review because there's the whole round plate. Let me know what, if you if and what you'll be watching. I am still not happy about Lask. At least I have two new jerseys that keep me over. I'm feeling a little bit better for the virus. Yeah, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.